914 and doctors often consider your gut to be your body's second brain, given all the different ways it can impact our health. So today we're going to talk about the best and worst foods when it comes to healing your gut. Joining me this morning, Dr. Ken Red Cross. He's a New York-based doctor and the founder of Red Cross Concierge. Good to see you, Dr. Red Cross. Welcome back. Good to see you again, Dan. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So I've just finished my yogurt. Okay, help us Good. first understand how big a role the gut plays in overall health, right? Because we've often talked about this link between what's happening up here and what's happening in your gut at the same time. You know, and Dan is true, everyone. We all know about serotonin as far as neurotransmitters in our brain, but guess what? Serotonin is primarily manufactured in the gut, just so all of you recognize that relationship of that brain-gut axis is an important one. Yeah, and you also say there's a connection between, I guess, seasonal allergies and gut health. Yeah. Now, I would have never put those two together. How are they connected? This is so cool, Dan. So the NIH did a study that showed that those who had less diversity in their microbiome were at increased risk for allergies. So they used ProPlus Symbiotic, which has three different probiotics called the Friendly Trio. The point is, not only were the allergy symptoms improved, Dan, but the quality of life improved, which is so important for allergy sufferers, especially here in New York. So, yeah, and I'm a big time allergy sufferer, man. Am I feeling it this week, too? It's like I, my eyes yeah. are, just, I want to scratch them out of my eye sockets. So you're saying what we eat could actually oh, yeah. help benefit your allergies. Absolutely. And look, and what we talk about, everyone, is that food is medicine. You hear it all the time, Dan, but it's true. So there are some things that we can keep in our cupboard that can make a really big difference, and there's some things that we should avoid right. that can also make a so big let's, difference. So let's start with the best ones, right? The best foods when it comes to gut health. You know, is the yogurt on the list? Yogurt's on the list, but I have a few more to share. Number one, bananas, everyone. So bananas are kind of that throwaway fruit. You run before you go to the gym, but I'm telling you, it's doing bigger things as a prebiotic for you. Sauerkraut. The Germans had it right. Sauerkraut is Sauerkraut. good because it's fer I know, because it's fermented. Now, I'm a kimchi fan, but the point is, that's something to think about. And also greens. When I mention greens, everyone, green leafy vegetables. Collard greens are also a good one besides spinach. And green tea. There, Dan. It's all about the polyphenols and what that actually does for your gut health. Good stuff to make sure that we kind of have in our pantry. Let's get real for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the sauerkraut could also yes. make you a little gassy. So all right. That, but that's all good. Everything's working. All systems go. Well, it's all good depending on where you are, I guess. But the point <laughs> is that you can also you can also get that out of kombucha and other ways. And Dan, to your point, when you mentioned yogurt, that's a good way as well. But I mentioned the sauerkraut and those fermented foods, everyone, because I want you to recognize those are whole prebiotics for us, all on the natural route. And Dan, you know me, I'm on the natural side yeah. of healing. Yeah, oh, I know. I know. And we also we often hear about the probiotics, but a prebiotic, there's a difference. There's a difference. That's why I mentioned that, that pro plus symbiotic. Yeah. That syn, Dan, means that there's a prebiotic and a probiotic all in one formula instead of trying to get one in one, putting that kind of together synergistically. Okay, so let's go on the flip side then, right? And the worst foods, the things that you should oh, be avoiding all together. I know, I'm, I'm scared about the list because I feel like I eat all of them. Oh. I know you do. I know you do, Dan. We'll talk off air. So <laughs> the point is, red meat always gets a bad rep. And in this case, guys, I have to give it a little bad rep a little longer. So if you're going to eat it, you want to eat less of it, and you want it to be lean because it's not good for the microbiome. The other mm. thing, fried chicken, fried fish, not so much the batter, but it's the oil. And you uh -huh. can imagine that if we're talking about the gut. You don't want to put that oil on that beautiful gut that we're trying to keep healthy. Alcohol. We know that alcohol is not good for our GI system in general, too much at least when you think about cirrhosis and liver yeah. health. The last one's interesting, foods. Foods that we have in our in our kind of cycle, we have to watch foods that have that have antibiotics in them. And also, when you talk to your doctor and you need antibiotics, Wait. Dan, let's make sure we follow that okay. up with a couple probiotic. things on that list here. Let's go back to the food with the antibiotics. Are you talking about like a you buying the organic version of say chicken breast? Yep, yep, yep. And all that's important, everyone. Now, look, I don't want to beat up on my farmers, but I know they need it sometimes. But you want to look at your labels and avoid that if possible. Okay, but some, you know, inflation's real. Some of this stuff's expensive. Yeah. So people are going to yeah. go for the cheaper option, right? So if you do buy it with the antibiotics or if you're having the alcohol, what's a serving size per week maybe that is not going to impact you too much? All right, so great question. When you talk about alcohol, it's only supposed to be a drink every other day or so to whatever that average is out to. And as far as those meats, and you are right, if you can't get away from it, 
once again, it's about moderation. When mm. you're eating that chicken breast or what have you, four ounces is something that's different than eight ounces, what we typically do in the States. But you're absolutely right. We have to balance what we can do to make sure that we're balancing out our gut health. Because believe me, if your gut is right, Dan, your life is right as well. All right. And what's true? Okay. So, what should we, other things besides diet? overall that we should be doing to boost our gut health a workout exercise so so you're always going to hear me talk about that exercise and guess what else dan sleep oh, sleep well, has been shown you I, lost know, me. I know i know you're like tapping out right yeah. now right think about it that one night when you're out you're not getting enough sleep how do you feel the next morning your gi system is a wreck yeah and that's about your microbiome so make sure you're getting that seven and a half hours of sleep each and every day like the cdc says but get that exercise in as well that brings those mm. yummy endorphins in to make sure that we get all of that good bacteria going, to make sure that we're not only digesting, but getting a benefit in immune health and our right. mood as well. Where does coffee fit in on any of this? Um, not so much in, okay. this, in this particular so talk, okay. but that green tea is best, but I'll be okay with that, Dan, only because we talked Mets earlier, so I'm okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> Dr. Ken Red Cross, that was great. Great to have you back here. You're full of oh, energy man. and good information. Good to see you. Uh, thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a blessed week. All right. Hopefully your Mets continue their streak. All right. Let's there you go. Now